The meeting will now come to order. Welcome to this meeting of the Indian Trail Board of Adjustment on 22 August 2019. My name is John Eigenbrode. I am the chair of the board. Would the board members go around and state their name for the record? Cat Miller. Donald Butler. Jarday Washington. Cynthia Wiley. Tim, would you give me your name? I, Tim, Jones. Tim Jones is is serving as staff for the board tonight. Sorry about that. We will consider the minutes from the last meeting. And the board, and are there any questions or corrections to the last minute? Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting from July 11th. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. The election of officers. How do you want to do this? Are we supposed to vote? Is this like give a vote for yourself kind of thing? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm on that one. The results are in. Chair Eigenbrode, you have been voted in as chair again for this year. And the vice chair will be Jeannie Lucas. Okay, thank you, Crystal. I will go over a general introduction to quasi-judicial decisions. These are a quasi-judicial evidentiary hearings. That means it is like a court hearing. State law, General Statute 160A-388, sets specific procedures and rules for concerning how this board must make its decisions. These rules are different from other types of land use decisions like rezoning cases. The board's discretion is limited. The board must base its decision upon competent, relevant, and substantial evidence in the record. A quasi-judicial decision is not a popularity contest. It is a decision constrained by the standards of the ordinance and based on the facts presented. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and standards, not personal preference or opinion. Participation is limited. This meeting is open to the public. Everyone is welcome to watch. Parties with standing have rights to participate fully. Parties may present evidence, call witnesses, and make legal arguments. Parties are limited to the applicant, the local government, and individuals who can show they will suffer special damages. Other individuals may serve as witnesses when called by the board. General witness testimony is limited to facts, not opinions. For certain topics, the board needs to hear opinion testimony from expert witnesses. The topics include projections about the impacts on property values and projections about increased traffic. Individuals providing expert opinion must be qualified experts and provide the factual evidence upon which they base their expert opinions. 
We will now open the evidentiary hearing for SUP 2019-0042. for the uh, Sardis Drive Maintenance Facility Storage Yard. Witnesses must swear in or affirm their testimony. At this time, we will administer the oath for all individuals who intend to provide witness testimony. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you shall give to the board in this action shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Thank you. The parties to this case are entitled to an impartial board. A board member may not participate in this hearing if she or he has a fixed opinion about the matter a financial interest in the outcome of the matter, or a close relationship with an affected person? Does any board member have any partiality to disclose or recusal to offer? The parties to this case have rights to any ex parte communication to be disclosed. Ex parte communication is any communication about the case outside of the hearing. That may include site visits as well as conversations with parties, staff, or the general public. Does any board member have any site visits to disclose? No. 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 Tim Jones will introduce this hearing. <clears throat> introduce this hearing. Before you start, please confirm that you were sworn in, and I'll administer the oath. Staff. Yes, I am sworn in. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Board. This request is from Liquid Management, LLC. The property owners are requesting a special use permit to construct a storage yard on a vacant 1.359 acre property. The property is zoned Regional Business District. The site also has a 7,500 square foot maintenance building that does not require this special use permit. A special use permit is required for contractor slash construction storage yards and any outdoor operations within this district. Site summary. Parcels are listed, but this is Sardis Church Road. It's hard to see the labels here. Highway 74, uh, the Aldi's, and then uh, some, some vacant properties that are off the Sardis Drive. Sardis Drive on this end pretty much ends in this area. Uh, Sardis Drive ends over here, so this is really graveled uh, pathway through this area. Uh, Jim Circle, if Jim Circle's mentioned, Jim Circle is another uh, little roadway off of Sardis Church Road. Uh, uh, the uh, easement continues through, but it's just there's no there's no road that's developed. It's just been cleared. Uh, this project will not be accessing Jim Circle. The property's here in the rectangle. Again, this is uh, more of a perspective instead of a. Just an aerial uh, shot of the same site. This whole area is uh, is pretty much zoned for regional business district, uh, the same as the property. Here's the concept plan. Concept plan showing Sardis Drive. 
Uh, Sardis Church Road is, is on the other side of these parcels here down below. Um, this will be the maintenance building, uh, detention pond to the rear. As I said, there's no access to the, to the uh, non-road. Uh, there's no road here on Jim Circle. They'll be accessing this piece of Sardis Drive. They'll be updating Sardis Drive. Um, where it ends here, they'll be making improvements enough to get up to their site. And the SUP, they have a parking lot here for the building, but the SUP is, is for the lay down lot. Um, our ordinance requires, they go for an SUP to have an outdoor uh, storage lot for, for equipment and other items. Uh, the buffer, uh, there'll be a buffer landscaping uh, and berm. Uh, the berm detail shows be roughly three feet in height. That'll boost the landscaping up a little higher. Um, and then the landscaping detail of, of what'll be along the top of that. You see in the plan where uh, they'll be doing, uh, they'll be doing the berm through here and additional landscaping um, and buffering through those other areas. Here's some pictures, um, photo to the left, looking at the, directly at the property across Sardis Drive, uh, and then looking northwest along Sardis Drive. Uh, in this photo, Aldi's, Aldi's is just over in this direction, and then the subject lot is just to the right side here. And they would be making improvements uh, from this roadway just up to their, this is their site here, but the entrance would be in this area. Staff analysis, this SUP is required for outdoor storage yard. Outdoor storage yard has 17,500 square feet approximately. Uh, development setbacks, shown there, 40 feet in the front along Sardis Drive. 20 feet on the side to the north along the undeveloped gym circle, 10 feet on the side to the east, and 20 feet on the rear to the south. Sardis Drive is to be the main entrance, and as I mentioned before, the undeveloped gym circle will not be used. The, S, uh, the SUP does not include uh, the buy right development, as I mentioned before, of the maintenance building. Maintenance building is uh, by right. Uh, as part of this submittal for the SUP, they were required to do an appraisal report. Uh, Morrison appraisal did the report. Uh, there were, their findings, outside storage will not negatively affect the values of the abutting or adjoining properties. Comprehensive plan consistency. Uh, in the comprehensive plan, the goal of economic development, goal number one, create a more balanced tax base by promoting the development of office parks, businesses, retail centers, and industrial parks. Promote a diverse local economy that will support varied employment opportunities. The proposed outdoor storage development is in harmony with the comprehensive plan because it contributes to creating a more balanced tax base and promoting a diverse local economy. So the criteria, we get into the criteria for approving the SUP. Uh, in, chap in our uh, Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 360.080, when considering an SUP, you want to know if the application first is complete. Uh, staff is of the opinion that the application uh, was complete and we had what we needed for this case. So number two, consider whether the application complies with all of the applicable requirements of this ordinance. Staff is of the opinion that the application complies with uh, the applicable sections of the ordinance. Also, uh, in looking at your approval, you want to uh, assess the project that it meets these four findings that are required. Uh, that it 
does not materially endanger the public health and safety and not substantially injure the value of adjoining or abutting property and be in harmony with the area in which it is to be located and be in general conformity with the Town of Indian Trail Comprehensive Plan and other adopted plans. So as uh, some of the things I've just mentioned uh, as your action item, uh, each of these items, number one, is the request consistent with the comprehensive plan, uh, the economic development goal that I just read a moment ago? Is the application complete? And that was the other slide I went through, that it is complete. Is the request compliant with the UDO? And staff's recommendation was that it was compliant. Uh, does the request meet all the required findings? And um, as I mentioned, uh, you'll just need to uh, consider each of the four findings there so that it meets uh, in your mind each of the four findings. And uh, when you are ready to make a motion, you'll make a motion to either approve SGP 2019-0042 as presented or make a motion to deny as presented. So I open that back up to any questions or I know the applicant is here if there are any questions. I think probably have any have anybody have questions for staff? I have no questions. Not this time, no. Okay. Uh, the applicant will now present evidence and legal arguments in support of the request. As a reminder, any evidence and argument must focus on applicable standards. Before you begin, please state for the record your name, address, and relation to the case, and confirm that you were sworn in. If not, I will now administer the note oath. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Michael Theberg uh, with Bowler Engineering. Uh, I'm the civil engineer for the applicant, um, and I live at 6720. Hollow Oak Drive in Mint Hill, and I was sworn in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just really wanted to touch base. Could you just go back to the plain view? Uh, that's really all I just needed to speak to. Um, so I just want to clarify um, one thing and then just get into a few other points um, about the plan. Um, the uh, Sardis Drive to where that's shown is the, the current existing limit. Um, so we would be coming off of that existing portion of the, of the road. It does end approximately where it's shown and labeled to today. Um, we do have a survey of that, so it's, it's reasonably accurate. Um, there is a sidewalk that is proposed along the frontage that is an improvement, and then obviously the entrance would be an improvement um, to, that, to that frontage. Um, as, as mentioned, this is a, you know, it's, it's defined as a contractor office with the outdoor storage area. Um, there would be a, a parking lot there for the employees. Um, it, this would be a, oh, no, the battery died. <laughs> <laughs> Technical difficulties. Uh, oh, good. Now if we can hear me even louder. Um, so it, there is a, uh, this is, a, you know, intended to be a, secure facility will be fenced because um, it, it will be storing equipment um, that is being used um, by the applicant for the operation of their business, um, landscaping and maintenance uh, business, uh, which I'll let them speak to in a little bit more uh, specifics in a moment. Um, there will be a berm uh, with plantings as shown along the, the two right-of-ways, Jim Circle and, and Sardis Drive, which is the single hatch, and then there will still be that, that evergreen uh, screen um, against the outdoor storage uh, area um, as shown by the cross hatch, which would be the same exact plantings as on top of the berm, just without the berm is what the plan currently uh, presents. Um, and, uh, you know, really that's about all from my standpoint to present. I just want to let you speak a little bit more about the operations. Good evening. My name is David Daniel. I'm the operations manager at the Moser Group. Um, 
just to kind of clarify a little bit what what we're trying to achieve here we um we have a maintenance team at the Moser group it's uh tmg maintenance and uh we take a lot of pride in what we do you've probably seen some of the properties that we manage and maintain um sun valley commons being being one of the flagship you know we try to take care of it make everything look sharp um, our maintenance team however has grown considerably in what we manage and what we maintain thankfully um, we've been able to hire new personnel and i'm really thankful actually brought one of them with me here today um, one of our newest guys and and um, we need a bigger facility to park all of our trucks online we keep all new trucks um, we're very fortunate to be able to do that and um, everything's logoed with the Moser group on it um, everything stays sharp um, all of our guys are, are professional well-dressed um, at all times and um, the all of our facilities we keep we keep you know dress right dress everything's manicured um, looks really really good and um, and what we need to do here basically is have somewhere to park all of our trucks online and some of our equipment um, we actually have a skid steer loader bobcat john deere tractor and a trailer and um, our mowers um, but our mowers stay in the box trucks um, so uh, uh, we need just somewhere where we can keep everything that is secured with a high fence with a with a you know automatic gate where the guys can safely park and, and keep their personal vehicles there during the day while we're out you know while they're out using utilizing the work equipment and work trucks um, where it will be safe and, and secure while they're while they're working but um, but as as Michael was you know alluding to about the landscape and we'll we'll spare no expense on on you know top-notch landscaping um, a nice fence um, we won't we won't be half stepping on any of it I mean it'll be it'll be something that you guys can be proud of and um, that we can be proud of and and um, and uh, and that the guys that work for us you know we want them to be proud of it and then the community that I was born and raised here um, um, played ball across the road grew up playing Indian Trail Athletic Association um, went to Sun Valley High School so community means a lot to me um, and uh, if you guys have any questions um, anybody about it I mean I'd try to try my best to, to answer them uh, in this in the outside storage area but be just going to store vehicles there or materials vehicles um, and work equipment only it'll be um, and I was just a little bit confused by it i thought that it was by right but i found out you know um that 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 did classify as uh outdoor storage since we were going to be storing vehicles and work equipment out there but that's the only thing that we'll be storing um the maintenance building itself now we will probably store some seed um pine needles straw but all that needs to be under roof you know um, that'll have to stay inside the building but um, like right now, we're getting ready to aerate, reseed, and refertilize everything, and and you know on all of our properties. So um, this would actually help us be able to buy some material in bulk, um, and and store it in the facility, so that you know we'll be able to hopefully save a little bit of money by by buying buying in bulk rather than uh, rather than piecemealing each individual job together. I'm looking kind of forward to that. Yeah. Do you have any hazardous materials? No, um, no hazardous materials whatsoever. No pesticides, um, et cetera. No, well, now pesticides, yes, there would be. Uh, I mean, as far as Roundup, you know, there would be Roundup on the truck okay. and the sprayer, something like that. Would that be the only pesticide we would have, as far as um, as far as that goes? Um, and uh, and uh, the um, the uh, herbicides will have herbicides on there as well you know so which will be that'll be the extent of it anything to do with with if you uh, had that in bulk it'll be stored inside no that actually we won't we won't buy in bulk because we only use that three times a year so it wouldn't make a lot of sense to 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 buy that in bulk 
Um, biggest one would be a two, that you can get them in two and a half gallon containers and five gallon containers. And we normally do two and a half gallon containers, and and they'll last you a year. You know, uh, one two and a half gallon container. So I just have two quick things I want to clarify. One for you, and one one for you. Um, so this is purely storage, right? There is no manufacture or or fabrication of anything on the premises. That's it's correct. Just storage. That's okay. correct. We'll That's park correct. our trucks there, and and then the guys will park their vehicles in the parking, take the trucks, go to work in the morning, come back in the evening, park the trucks, park the equipment online, get okay. their trucks, go home. And then the road improvements you mentioned, that was a clarification of what staff mentioned when you mentioned improvements to the road to Sardis Drive. You mentioned it in your report that there would be road improvements, the sidewalk and the <coughs> entry are the limit to those road improvements, correct? Correct. Our, our understanding is the road ends as, as right. shown there. But there wouldn't be any actual improvements to the road. It's just the sidewalk and the gate. Right. I mean, if, okay. if, if anything, you know, I just wanted to clarify yeah. that point because it mentioned road improvements, and I didn't want it to. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and I do believe, I mean, right now, I think a lot of that road is kind of filled with you know, some debris. And gutter. I mean, obviously, like they're saying. Right. You might have to actually yeah. improve it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, we'll be blowing it. Right we'll be blowing it. Look, it'll look sharp. I okay. mean, we'll take, yeah. take good care of it. I got a couple questions. So, um, because you're storing stuff here, so it's kind of gate locked kind of I mean is it a rolling gate that you guys have a remote yes. control access you know like your drivers will have a key yes ma'am what we'll have is a um, um, pedestal what do you call that like, a, like at a storage facility kind of thing yeah you, you come in it's a little keypad um, there's a name for that fancy name but I'm not a fancy <laughs> guy so you just go up punch your code in right. and all the guys will have the same code you know and then they'll punch in and the gate will automatically open for them okay. um, another question and I'm not sure who to direct this to, but it's in the report that says um, Union County Public's work stated that access to the sewer on the neighboring property will require a public sewer maintenance extension. The applicant, you guys are working on any required agreements with the property owners and or Union County Public Works. Who wants to speak yeah. on that? I, I can speak to that. So um, there, there, are, there is a sewer main in Sardis Drive up at the top corner of our property, top left corner of the plan. Um, and it would just be one sewer lateral um, that would serve the building. Um, and that, so there wouldn't be any sewer main extension required. That, that I've spoken with, jo with Jonathan. I'm going to do, do his last name poorly. Jo Jonathan Drusinovich at UCPW. And, you know, it, it's um, th there was another option discussed at one time to go down Jim Circle because there's a sewer main in front of the, the building just to the, to the uh, north of us that's there today. But this was just a lot. Um, a lot closer, and UCPW agreed that we could just use that manhole um, to serve so you the don't building. Really need any required agreements with? No, okay. no, just be our on our site or in the public right away. Okay. Does the board have any other questions? Yes. Um, is somebody going to be on site during business hours, like a office person, maybe? Um, during business hours, sometimes, and um, I'm actually going to have. If you see the layout there, I'm actually going to have um, um, we'll have one restroom in there and one office area in there. So um, there will be times when me as the operations manager, I'll be there throughout the day. And then the maintenance manager will be there, which I brought him with us. He'll be there, but not all the time because he'll be in the field as well. But um, all of our properties are within this area. We all of our properties are in Union County except for one. So we'll be a stone's throw away um, with, and all of our properties already, we'll have a, a name, a number, um, a point of contact number, and we'll have that on the door too. So if anybody needs to, needs to contact us, we'll have that put up so that uh, if anybody has a problem with anything, they can call. And um, all of our car washes, same way. If you have, anybody needs my number, go to one of our facilities and you'll see my number on the wall. So. Um, It'll be right there. So if anybody needs me for any reason, they can they can get me. Any other questions from the board? Does any party have additional questions for the witness? If nothing else, let's see where's my. Excuse me, Chair. Yeah. You have 
you have a public comment sheet there? Yeah. Uh, Shirley Wilson. You would present evidence and legal arguments for, for or against as a reminder. Any evidence and argument must focus on the appropriate standards. Before you begin, please state for the record your name, address, and re relation to the case and confirm that you were sworn in. If not, I will administer the note now. Okay, I'm Shirley Wilson. I was sworn in and I am uh, for you approving this. I'm not against it. Um, I speak for my sisters. We own the property along Sardis Church Road that is adjacent to the property. And uh, we do want you all to approve this uh, uh, for them. Okay. Does anybody have a question for Shirley? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, no others. So now, Does the board have any board questions for the parties or witnesses before we move into deliberation? No questions. Hearing no additional questions or presentation of relevant facts, the board will now begin deliberations. The evidentiary hearing remains open so that the board may ask clarifying questions if needed. As a reminder, the board is tasked with deciding if based on evidence presented, this proposal meets the applicable standards this decision cannot be based on the personal preference of board members. Rather, it is based on standards and evidence. Board members are encouraged to reference the applicable standards and specific evidence in their deliber deliberation. For this particular case, the board is asked to decide, does the record include competent, relevant, and substantial evidence that it meets the UDO? Any discussion? Okay. No, I think we'll just start. Well, we make a motion. Okay. We must do our finding a fact. I'll make a motion that the application is complete. Based on. I'll second that. Based on. Based on. Oh, based on staff recommendations. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> <coughs> Motion whether the application complies with all the applicable standards, applicable requirements of the ordinance. I second the motion based on staff recommendation. We need, I believe. A, we need a motion. Oh, a motion that first. wasn't your motion? No, that wasn't no. a motion. No, you don't have to announce <laughs> it. <laughs> all right, I will make a motion that the board will consider whether the application complies with all of the applicable requirements of this ordinance based on staff recommendation. Why? I'll second it. Do you have a reason why? Based on staff recommendation. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, consider whether it does not endanger the public health or safety. I'll make the motion that it does not materially endanger public health or safety because there are no hazardous materials or that are being stored on the site. And there'll be a security fence. Uh, for as far as safety, fence. yeah. 
Do I have a second? I'll say. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to whether it does not substantially insure, injure the value of adjoining or abutting I will, property. I will make a motion that it doesn't substantially injure the value of the adjoining or abutting property uh, based on the appraisal port in the information packet. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Is there a motion that it's in harmony with the area in which it is to be located? I make a motion that it is in harmony with the area because it's all commercial business surrounding it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <clears throat> and a motion with it's in conformity with the Town of Indian Trail comprehensive plan and other adopted plans. I make a motion that it is in general conformity with the Town of Indian Trail comprehensive plan and other adopted plans um, based on them keeping up with the property um, and following our guidelines of the UDO. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> Aye. I have a motion to approve. Yeah, I make a motion to approve SUP 2019-0042 as presented. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. Congratulations. Probably one of your easiest ones. Yeah. Mr. Daniel. Mr. Daniel. I'll give it back. Mr. Daniel. Thank you. She had a question. It's not about this though. Yeah. Do we have any other business? Oh. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to quickly um, update the board on the draft Unified Development Ordinance and Land Development Standards Manual. Um, I think this project's been kicked around for a while, so you may be aware of it. Um, we are closing in as quickly as possible. Uh, the draft has been handed over uh, to the town manager and attorney. We have been waiting simply because Union County um, has a land use retreat next Wednesday and Thursday. So we want to make sure we want to get feedback and hear how that process goes before we officially move forward in the draft. But we're hoping to move it forward through to council in the fall and um, latest adoption in December. So um, I know that project's been out there for a while and just wanted to update you. And the UDO and the land development standards will, will kind of, the draft will go forward at the same time. So we'll have a whole new Bible to, to go by. So probably October. We're looking at um, December as final adoption. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Because okay. everything right. gets done. Okay. In December. Right. And, and we don't we don't really have an idea about you know how many questions and and what the process will look like once we start putting it putting it through. But we would like um, our plan is December for final adoption. Okay. We have nothing else. Close the hearing. And do I have a motion to adjourn? Or does everybody want to stay here? I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? second. I second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>